Because of the events of last evening and the disruption of the annual convention and the inability of the organization to conduct its business and elect officers, as the president of the organization, since there is no new elections, I am immediately uh, suspending all staff of this organization and putting the operation of the organization in the hands of the elected officers who were elected at last year's convention uh, until such time that we are able to establish procedures for an impartial election. The process in terms of trying to reach these procedures will begin immediately. Clyde Giles is the man who is running for election. For several years, the BUILD organization has been controlled by a select group of individuals under the leadership of William Gator, executive director of the staff, who has used the power and the prestige of this organization for his and the staff's own personal ag aggrandizement at the expense of the black community. This year, I, Clyde Giles, a candidate for the president of BUILD, with a slate of people's candidates, sought to challenge this group and bring BUILD back to the people. The convention of 72 had about a six month buildup that, that I was aware of. Uh, remember, I did not hold an office, but I would be down in the office periodically. And sometime less than six months beforehand, I began hearing uh, that someone from the University of Buffalo was beginning to organize and they had expressed some interest in take, quote, taking over the build organization. And uh, the means of doing that was to go out and get people signed up. And part of the legitimate uh, function was to sign up delegates to the, uh, to the organization. But if someone was forming another group, to what purpose? What criticism did they have of the existing uh, structure or offices? And that was my question. So I began hearing that they were doing some things and that it was getting a little rough, that they were not following the rules, that the group intended to pull the organization uh, in a very different direction than it was originally set up. This is what I was hearing. When the actual convention occurred, it was at New Skateland where we had held a few uh, conventions. And I was present, my sister was present, there were rumors that uh, there would be some, some problems because the word I heard was if this particular group, which was led by Clyde Giles, did not get their way, they were going to disrupt the convention. This is what I had heard. Uh, but rumors are always afloat in our community, and I'm saying, this organization should be strong enough not to, uh, not to allow them to follow the rules. And that's all we want. If they, if they uh, follow the rules and accomplish something, fine. But not say, I'm going to rule or ruin. And uh, that's the kind of thing I did not like. And I was hearing something that gave, gave me indication that this might be the purpose of the group. So I didn't have too much regard for what I was hearing, the people that I was hearing. Why are they trying to take them? What are they going to do that's not being done now? And I, I don't recall where they were trying to take it, but there were some indications that they were not going to focus in on the same issues that the elected delegates had been following for several years. The meeting opened up. Uh, there was some disruption. Uh, some of the followers of, of uh, Pi Giles wouldn't let the voting go on. It wouldn't let the convention go on. They got up on the raised platform which was probably two and a half three feet high that's the stage and when they didn't get their way they started they leaped into or leapt into the uh audience and started fighting with some people so it it was it was pretty tense and pretty distasteful i recall i came late my brother had left some papers home which he was planning on uh, passing out at the convention I showed, when I showed up, there was a heavy debate going on, and there was a division of, uh, I think it was Derek Bird, who was at the time, who was on the podium, called for a division of the House. 
which uh, uh, because they tried to take a, a count of those in favor of the motion, all those opposed, and they could get no clear uh, dis uh, definition as to whether the ayes have it or the nays. So they called for a division of the House. All those in favor went to one side, all those opposed moved to the other. And uh, there were some young uh, people there that representing, I uh, won't say which force they were with, but at the time they were uh, trying to manipulate people to go where they wanted them to go. And uh, my brother, I recall, was surrounded about, surrounded by about six or eight people trying to uh, uh, force him to go to the side which he didn't want to. And at that point I believed, or I thought anyway, that someone was fixing to uh, punch him. And I reacted, I guess, in a manner that anyone else would to, to keep someone from being hurt. And I intervened. And this is what erupted into uh, the fiasco there, and uh, the whole house came down, so to speak, of people fighting and the whole thing, so that th that day there was no election. People were running, uh, I think there were more policemen in the la uh, ladies' room than there were ladies. The siege of Bill's convention and the reckless charges Mr. Giles is making about bill leaders is calculated to destroy the bill organization. For those of us who have worked and fought with the bill organization over the past five years, this move by Mr. Giles' forces must be closely examined. We must ask ourselves, A, who is Mr. Giles? What is his background and record? After all, Mr. Giles is relatively a newcomer to Buffalo. Where did he come from and what did he do there? B, what does Mr. Giles mean when he says, bring Bill back to the people? For the past five years, we all know that Bill has held open meetings and conventions, fought every issue relevant to the needs of the minority people, and never rejected the participation of the serious-minded citizens in this community. Gentlemen, if you could, what is the major difference between the Pearson platform and the Giles platform? One of the differences is that we are structured to be a community-minded, community-based, community action organization. Uh, what Mr. Giles proposes to do is to uh, entertain national and international planes. We were not structured for that. This is a community organization and we feel that our efforts should be exerted in this community. We have enough community problems to solve before we go on a national or international plane. A lot of the charges that were made by Clyde, I thought, inflamed the people who were following him, particularly the people from the university, students and so on, who were just beginning to, to recognize Bill as an organization that they wanted to be involved in. So, uh, Clyde was a, uh, I had met Clyde uh, uh, several months before all this happened, and I, found, I thought he was a very, uh, uh, oh, radical person, good guy to have in the organization. He too was a, uh, a professor at the University of Buffalo. And so uh, it was great to get that kind of, that caliber person in the organization. But as it turned out, I thought, I think Clyde had a separate agenda for the organization. It was an old Bill founder. He was there from the very beginning, uh, come out of the uh, UAW leadership training experience, uh, machinist by profession, uh, had that attitude of precision. And he told Ed Pearson, this is what we're going to do. He never veered from that. Uh, good person to have on your side in a fight, in a struggle, 
in, uh, in a dark alley uh, when the chips were down, you'd want Ed Pearson on your side. And a lot of people, uh, segments in Bill, had gotten in, into their head that there was monies available for people to be rewarded for certain things. So you got a faction that was uh, opposing Bill Gator, and then they were starting to oppose certain other members because they thought that they were running the Bill organization, which wasn't actually true. The organ mm -hmm. of the people that they were accusing of this were the so-called soldier workers. And these are the people that, that could be called on to uh, do the, uh, well, if you want to say dirty work, the dirty work, such as if anything flared up in the projects, this group had to go uh, try to help the police get it uh, tempered down and things of that sort. But now, what, the, what a lot of people thought that due to the fact that the BEAP and other programs were coming in, it was going to be monies that could be put into other people's pockets. But what people didn't realize that as we went along with these things, we spent our own monies, we never got paid for any of this, we never even got gas fare. Here's another example of somebody seeing something that's good, but they want to take over, they want to take control for their benefit rather than the benefit of the community. That was my feeling about a group coming in and saying either I'm going to take, over, uh, take control of this group or I'm going to ruin it. I won't let you operate. That to me was passe, old style stuff. It should, we should get rid of those attitudes, otherwise how can our community learn to organize itself and, and govern itself? All delegates seated at the interrupted convention of May 13th will be eligible to vote. Each delegation will be recertified. Certification for eligibility to vote will be verified by receipt records of paid convention fees. Only official delegates whose names appear on the delegates list will be eligible to vote. Uh, to ensure these procedures being uh, adhered to, each candidate is asked to sign the procedures and rules. I think that the problem that we had, of course, was one of election procedures. Um, and I think that we are um, making every security that this be a fair and impartial election. And I think that once the, um, the people uh, of this community have voiced their preference for the offices of this organization through their ballot, uh, we will uh, be able to get on with the business of this organization. As the new president of BUILD, what's your immediate job going to be? That of reestablishing uh, the committees and that have worked a number of programs that we have found ourselves in uh, lack, with a lack of leadership or due to the suspension of the staff. I, we have to reaffirm up these uh, programs and, and begin to get them moving again. Although Pearson had called for an end to the factionalism and infighting, it was questionable as to whether Bill would recover from this ill-fated convention. Well, I don't regret anything that I did or anyone who uh, I was responsible for doing. Uh, I don't regret 
the challenge between Ed Pearson and Clyde Giles. I don't regret supporting Ed Pearson. Uh, no, I, I don't really regret. Uh, uh, I think it was, uh, in, in, in many ways, uh, typical of organizations like Bill to have that kind of internal struggle. The unfortunate part is that it still always left uh, somewhat of a bad taste in people's mouths because uh, you would always have that particular group saying that it was unfair and then they weren't going to get involved to the extent that they should have been involved uh, once a decision has made both sides are supposed to come together and move for the, the betterment of the community and I don't think that happened. My hope was that Bill would continue to grow and expand and to um, um, meet new challenges and um, you know, take on new directions as issues and problems and um, uh, concerns changed within the uh, African American community. Build as an organization, I think, struggled with um, the concept that probably all organizations, community-based organizations, struggle with once they have uh, gained power. And that is that once you've been recognized and have gained power, what do you now do? Uh, what are the activities? How do you use that power and that influence for the um, broad community in a way that serves the greatest number of people? Um, and I think that was the issue that Bill was facing. Um, we were recognized. We had a power base. Um, we were into um, developing services. Um, and would we go then strongly into a more service-oriented role or continue to be a, an aggressive uh, action organization that, um, you know, was able to demonstrate and to continue to address uh, the grievances that uh, were legitimate within the black community. I mean, anytime you have a city governor that, that, will, <laughs> that will come and sit down in an organization, we didn't hardly have a decent chair to sit down in at that particular time. And, uh, you know, to see this and to have all of these programs and to be able to employ people to bring about the changes that that bill brought about, we change attitudes. When the build organization began to get hit program being paid by different government agencies, they would apply for grants and they get a program to operate a criminal justice or a jobs program or the skills assessment center. At that point, volunteers who said, I have been volunteer in build for X number of years, uh, I should have one of those jobs. And they often didn't know what the qualifications were for the job, so there was some dissatisfaction if they were not hired. But the, there was, in my mind, there was uh, considerably more cohesion prior to uh, Bill starting to operate different programs, affirmative action programs, and on and on and on. And to me, that's where people began disagreeing with each other. That's where they began disagreeing with the leadership and to, to an extent that I thought was harmful. And that's my belief in, in how the organization began to decline. It's once money started coming in, people were saying, I deserve that although it might have required a particular skill to occupy that job, they wanted to sell it. And wherever possible, I thought Bill did hire as many of the people who had worked uh, as volunteer, you know, volunteers for a long time. I, because they knew the issues. Yeah, if they met the qualifications, why, why wouldn't we put them in the job? But there were qualifications for some of these jobs that could not be overlooked. Only days after Pearson's election, a newspaper was released claiming to have the inside story on the events that transpired on May 13th. The newspaper was called Unchained, published by the Buffalo chapter of the Harriet Tubman prison movement. It is important to point out, however, that the publishers of this paper were in full support of Clyde Giles and the People's Candidates. The newspaper had accused Ed Pearson, Bill Gator, and the rest of the paid staff of using flagrant and corrupt tactics throughout the convention. Among these charges were the convention reportedly started late and dragged through the night. 
Many groups were not registered and did not receive information packets because there was no master list ever made. Improper control of the sound system and improper distribution of the ballots to select individuals. When those ballots were collected, none of the people's candidates were represented. After the convention and after the fight broke up the convention, Dick Ford, who was, who was uh, uh, I guess, still president because we didn't get around to electing a new one, uh, came in and, and dismissed the staff, suspended the staff, took over the administration of the organization so that, uh, in, his, in his words, uh, that the election uh, and, and the unfinished business of the convention could take place in a short period of time. I personally, I didn't think it was justified because I thought we could have done that. Uh, but uh, uh, there was some closeness between Dick Ford and Cloud Giles. So I think on the one side, Dick was trying to be very, very fair. And I think on the other side, he was torn between his personal feelings towards certain people, uh, me included. We'll probably never, we'll probably never know the full truth. Um, the, the issues of um, having to um, suspend, for example, the uh, hired staff of Bill after that convention, and then reestablish a process for the elections um, when um, the candidates, both Clyde Giles and Ed Pearson, um, were running for the same office. Um, I think if, if one looks at that, um, the truth is whether or not the staff was involved in um, illegal campaigning on behalf of uh, one candidate over the other are issues that will never be resolved. I mean, I, for example, am not uh, sure of how much of that went on during that period. Uh, I'm sure some of it did. Um, I know that uh, Giles believed that the staff was um, campaigning for Ed Pearson, and it was clear by Bill's policy that the staff was to be neutral in those elections. Um, and um, it was out of that kind of, uh, those issues that the convention broke down. Um, and um, I think we learned a lot from that. We learned how important Bill was for the African American community. Because during that period, um, the League of Women Voters rallied to Bill's, uh, on, on Bill's behalf, helped us organize a new election. Uh, set up rules and procedures for doing that. And then we were able, within a week's time, to carry out a, um, a fair, impartial election process, which resulted in uh, the election of Ed Pearson as the new president. Um, I'm not sure whether that would not have happened at the convention itself, but there could be no question at that point that the election was a fair, an impartial election. And with the um, suspension of the staff people during that, that, um, that period of about a week or so between the convention and the second election uh, that took place, uh, because they were suspended, had their, if they had some interest in, in campaigning on one candidate or the other candidate's side, they were in some sense free to do that because they were no longer uh, employed by the organization, they were in suspension and therefore had, you know, were not uh, under the same restrictions. Um, but I think it was that process um, and that, um, that conflict which clearly um, demonstrated the importance, the significance, and the support that Build as an organization had within the African American community.